Hey guys, welcome back to another video. As you can see here, the video that we're going to be doing today is we're going to be joining the panels. Now, if you guys have been keeping up with me on my Facebook, you know that um, last night I posted my sixth uh, panel in completion to being um, sewn together. So I am glad to say this is my last panel and you guys are not going to see any more of this blanket other than what you see here until she's completely done. <laughs> you guys thought you were going to see a sneak peek of her. Well, I am sorry, but once she's completely done, you guys will have full access to see her. Now, um, some of you were having lots of questions um, about the joining. As on my uh, video of joining the squares, square to square, and doing the outline. Um, I mentioned that I left the little end tails here and some of you were trying to figure out why I had left those on there. Let's see if I can slide this down a little bit so you can see the other one. So see I have tails left here. I did that for a very important reason from where you know my aspect of the whole project. Okay so we're gonna start there. So this is going to act similar to a guideline as well as an extra uh, layer of security for your panels. So before I start, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two tails and I'm going to gently tie those together to where I uh, don't see much of a space there. And I'm just going to double tie that. Okay? So you're going to go over here and I do two at a time. And you're going to do this one. Make sure that they line up properly and you're just going to tie those off okay so that's that's going to also give you a guideline for the basis of your square so you're not sewing into the other square um, and also it's just going to give you some added security okay so let's see if I can get down just bear with me I'm having to do this setup a little differently than normal okay so I have taken quite a long piece of yarn and one of my uh, biggest uh, needles and it does have a little curvature on it there it does help um, but whatever you have make sure that they're turned the right way do not that was the most tedious part is remembering that there is a front and there is a back to these the back is more flatter the front is indented alright so now what I do is if you followed my instruction and that's the only way that this is gonna work is if you followed my instruction about how to do the um, the border in each corner here in each of these corners I put two single crochet okay so I did that because that would give me double security also when I went to join these so I'm gonna start at the the very first one in the corner okay you had two single crochet you got one you got two I'm gonna put my hook into that first one and I'm hoping you guys can see okay I can't zoom in but so far um, let's see there we go see if that's any better I don't want to come out of the camera alright so then you're gonna look on the other one you've got your first one here and your first one here so you're just gonna take that and you're gonna join those two together you're gonna pull how I mean if you want to do enough yarn in your needle to do just joining the first set that's fine I usually get about two and a half to three out of just this one uh, strand that I've cut off here so then you're just gonna pull that pull that and you're just gonna keep pulling and you're gonna again you're gonna leave yourself a tail okay so you wanna make sure those line up and then you're gonna go through to this second one that should have been your second single crochet in that corner um, gap there so then you just want to pull it all the way through don't pull real tight you don't want this so tight to where it squeezes your work because then it's going to cut down on the size of uh, your measurement it's going to be a little off okay and then you're just going to do this all the way across um, you may have to here on your corners you may have to end up spacing those strands out a little bit because they become a little combobulated there okay and you're just gonna keep doing this I keep grabbing the wrong strand on I? Um, and again this is I was debating whether to do this video um, I had a lot of requests for it but it's it's simply the same process as what I did on joining the squares and putting the border on the squares um, so basically uh, it's just a simple whip stitch 
which I find worked uh, beautifully, beautifully on this. Um, I'm extremely happy about it and can't wait to give you a close-up view of her when she's done. Um, so I'll just talk to you a little bit until I get to the end. Um, so anyway, as I said, I ended up with a total of, it's, oh gosh, I can't even remember, either a 90 or a 100 squares, I can't remember. Um, so um, it ended up being in between a full and a queen size, if we did our measurements correctly. Um, which is fine. Like I say, I don't want it for a bed. I wanted it for my personal use. And uh, it's plenty big enough for that. And as you guys see that I'm keeping these in line. So see, when you have this one here, you go straight directly through the next one. And there, you may be a stitch or two off. Um, you know, over here you may have one extra stitch or one fewer stitch, something like that. You can make it work. It's really not that tedious. So don't get all bent out of shape. If you get to the end, you say, oh, no, I've got one extra stitch. Well, just stitch it right in there. That's the thing about these... Um, you can make these uh, corrections very simply as long as there's not more than one. Sometimes you can get by with two corrections, but most of the time I don't have more than one if I have any at all. But I have had them, and it's easy to do when you're dealing with so many stitches. So, you know, you're just going to keep going. And uh, overall, I am very, very happy with my project. I'm so happy that um, you know it's it's just been the big one of the biggest projects I've ever done other than my star afghan but I don't even think I put as much work into that as what I've done this all right so you're getting down to the end so you really got to pay attention once you get down to the end okay so what I did is I I, I put my stitch here and then you're gonna have this corner well you can spread it out and see what you have left if you need to. Okay, so I still have one corner one right here to go. So you're going to do that corner one. Now, you're going to take these strands and you're just going to pull them out of your way because you're going to make those strands go this way. You're going to work them in that way. Now what I did for that, that uh, little bit of extra security is I'm going to go right here in the center of this connective whip stitch and I'm going to come out the other side just barely into that stitch that's at the top and I'm going to pull through and I'm going to do an added stitch there and believe me you're not going to be able to tell it's an added stitch um, so that is going to kind of lock this knot from where I tied those into place there and then you're just going to go on over across and if you have your stitches lined up correctly you should just jump immediately right into the next um, square and these right here, you may have one sitting on top of the other again. You'll have to work with that and get it situated out. And you do want to work over the top of these a little bit so that um, you can weave those in automatically and um, lock those uh, in there. So again, now you're just going to work your way um, on down. Let me make sure I'm at where I'm at. Yep, sometimes i got to stop and make sure my holes are lining up. And then you're just going to go, I don't know, I go maybe five, sometimes six stitches. Depends on how long the um, those uh, beginning threads are. Then once I get that far, I'm just going to cut those off. And those have now disappeared. Okay, and then you just work it. And you go all the way down. Okay, so when you get down to here, you're well, we tied that knot already. So we got that knot tied. You're going to do the same thing. And then when you get down to here, you know, you're just going to tie these, you're going to tie these off the, the same exact way. Okay, so don't do more than two ahead. You can do more. It's up to you, but I just kind of stayed two ahead of myself. So, um, so you see what I got going. So see, this kind of acts as a barrier to where, you know, this is your start and your stop point for that square, those two squares, sorry. And it just, it keeps things lined up a bit for you as well. But, um... You see how this comes out? It comes out really nice. And the middle is, is just as nice. You don't see anything as far as that extra stitch that you added. You know, so then um, basically this is all you do. I mean, like I said, there was not a whole lot to explaining how to join your panels. It's the same thing as joining your squares. You're just joining a uh, larger amount 
of squares and it's just going to take you a little bit longer to join your panels versus um, joining your squares so then you're just going to go all the way down and then you're going to finish off and then you're just going to weave in those ends so again this is my last panel to join once i have this last panel i am going to go through and i'm going to snip up all of my ends and make sure everything is tuck, tucked and pulled and snipped um, and uh, then I will be working on the border so as for right now you guys have asked me what border are you using I'm not sure I do know it's just gonna be a basic white I mean not not a basic border but I'm using basic white to match the trim um, I will be doing some type of uh, decorative border I'm not sure what it is I do have a book that is nothing but borders so um, I'm going to look through that and see what I come up with and I'm hoping that the border uh, based on if I, how, how many hours I spend working on it uh, a day amongst all the rest of my other projects um, I'm hoping to have this done by this weekend in completion the border hopefully and everything else um, you guys know me I'm work, up working all night and I may sleep three hours and that's about it so if you have any further questions just leave them in the box below the video other than that that's a simple join now if you've chose to join some other way I I don't know um, if you've run across something that you're not sure of with your joining technique and you think you need help that's fine leave me a message I will see what I can do to help you but in the meantime all I did was do the whip stitch together and it's turned out beautifully I'm in love with it and um, I'm very happy with um, my Facebook African here so um, I hope you, this answered your questions about joining and about um, tying our knots and their sole purpose here and again that's my professional way of doing it not everybody has that same opinion everybody you know has their own personal way of doing things but I feel like if you do it right the first time you don't have to go back and deal with um, things coming apart on you so if you do that and you, you do your extra security to start with you don't have that to worry about later on down the road so just um, use your technique um, see what's best for you and your project and I will um, see you guys once she's finished so this is the last picture on YouTube or Facebook that I will be posting of this afghan until it's complete C meaning everything trimmed up this last panel sewn on and the complete border so I will give you a complete measurement of how big she is once it's complete and I will do a completion video to let you see it and I will post several pictures on my Facebook so again I would not look for that until for at least another you know week maybe a week and a half depending on how how much I have to do Alright, so until then guys, hope you have a great day and happy hooking. Bye!